Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are continuing on with the AP Calculus 2010 free response questions. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, five and six are on the same page here. So we'll do five here, and then we'll do the six in the next video. Six in the next video. The function g is defined in differentiable on the closed interval negative 7 to positive 5 and satisfies g of 0 equals 5. The graph of g prime of x, the derivative of g, consists of a semicircle, three line segments shown in the figure above. Find g of 3 and g of negative 2. So, um... So I have a graph of g prime. So how do I relate g and g prime is g of 3 is an integral something from something to 3 of g prime of x. Now how do I decide what this something is? Well, it kind of depends on what I know. I know 0, so I'm going to use 0. And I'm going to say plus g of 0. Okay? This is the standard notation for um, relating this is from fundamental theorem of calculus because this integral is g of 3 minus g of 0, right? Because I do the antiderivative of this, which is g. I plug in 3, I plug in 0. Then that's that's kind of what this is. Okay, so um, the integral from 0 to 3 is from 0 to 3 would be this area here. Okay, so I need to compute that area. This area is a quarter of a circle, like it's a radius 2. So it's one-fourth the area of the circle, which is pi times 2 squared. This is one-fourth the area of a circle, plus this area of this triangle. Now, this is 2, and um, this, this must be only, like this height is 3. This width, because this whole width of this whole triangle looks like Oh, let me see. This is 2, it goes to 3. Oh, this is 3 right here. So this the width of this triangle is 1. So this is 1 times 3 divided by 2 is the area of this. So that's 3 halves. And then g of 0, they gave us, what's 5? So this is pi plus 5 plus 3 halves. 5 is 10 halves, so this is 13 halves. Okay, that's what g of 3 is. g of negative 2 is the same same idea. 0 to negative 2, g prime of x, dx, plus g of 0. Now i got to do the area between 0 and negative 2. Now this area is generally positive, but because I'm integrating from right to left, the area is negative. So this area is uh, pi, but this, this integral is negative pi plus 5. Okay. Find the x-coordinate. Oh, I didn't actually see what I was doing. I didn't really. AP calculus today. Okay, um, B. Find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection on the graph y equals g of x on the interval. Okay, what is g? When do I have a point of inflection? It's when the second derivative is 0 or undefined and g double prime changes signs I change from concave up to down or down to up okay so g double prime equals 0 is the derivative of this function right because this is g prime so g double prime is when this is so g double prime would be the, the second derivative are the, when are the slopes so let's see, undefined or zero. Okay, has a, so let's flag all the point, the critical points. Here, it, the slope is zero. Here, the slope is undefined. Here, the slope is undefined. And here, the slope is undefined. And nowhere else is the slope. So my candidate points are x equals negative 2, 0, 2, and 3. Now I have to see when g double prime changes primes. Again, it's the slopes. This slope goes from, po this is a positive slope because it's going up. This is also a positive slope here because it's going up. So this is not, this doesn't count. Here it's positive slope to negative slope. So we do do this one. This is negative slope to positive slope, so that's fine. And this is positive slope to negative slope, so that's fine. 
So x equals 0, 2, and 3. Okay. The function h is defined by h of x equals g of x minus 1 half x squared. Find the x coordinate of each critical point of h, where blah, and classify each critical point as their location relative min, max. I'm going to do this on the next page. Make room. So I have h of x is g of x minus 1 half x squared. So I want to consider um, when I have a critical point. Critical point is when h prime of x is equal to 0. That's when g prime, the derivative of h of x is just g prime of x minus x. That's equal to 0. So I want g prime of x to equal x. So I want the derivative to equal where it is. Oh, that's, that's, that's a weird spot. So let's see, g prime of x um, equals x. So this is, like, if I think about it here, like if this is the graph of g prime and I want it equal to x, I want wherever it's equal to this line where the y and the x values are the same. Okay. So it looks like about here. And then here and here. I, well, no, no, actually, sorry. It probably, um, since I didn't uh, draw this totally well, let's, let's erase what I did before just to make it clean. I want to look at the line y equals x. It goes through this point here. This is 2, 2. This is 3, 3. So where g prime is equal to x, it's where the y and the x value here, because this is a graph of g prime, where the y value and the x values are equal. So this y value, oh, that's kind of annoying. So they give you two points, two possible points, x equals 3. This one's a little bit tricky. Um, this is um, the point root 2 and root 2. And I'll kind of explain like how I, because it's a 45-45 triangle, um, I want like, like this is a circle with radius 2. So that means like the x squared plus y squared has to equal 2. So I think over 2, let me think. So I want x squared plus x squared to equal 2. Uh, that means 2x squared equals 2. Oh, no, it's x squared equals 1, so x equals 1. So these are my two possible um, possible points, x equals 1 x e and x equals negative 3. And um, I'll just use a sign test for this one to determine, because now I have to classify whether these are min or maxes. Um, I'll use the sign test for this. So I'm going to say um, h prime you know, when I'm less than three, um, what's when I'm less than three, g prime is bigger than x, like the y value is bigger than x, so this is positive, so this is greater than zero. And when I'm down over here, it's less than zero. So h prime changes from positive to negative at x equals three. That makes x equals three. If I go from um, positive slopes to negative slopes, this is a relative max. And for x equals, oh crap, this is x equals 1, my bad. Now for x equals 3, um, when I go left, I'm below. So um, g prime is smaller, well let me see, it's, yeah, g prime is smaller than x. And here I'm also smaller than x. So you see that by the sign test, I'm negative and negative. So for x equals 3, it's neither. Because by the first derivative test, the slopes don't change. It, it, the, 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 the slope goes from negative to negative. OK. So let's take a look at the resulting answers here. I don't even remember what I did for these problems. Let's see. Pi, 13 over 2 plus pi. 5 minus pi, or negative pi plus 5. It's the same. 0, 2, and 3, because they change sign. Mm -mm -mm. I got root 2. I messed, I messed it up. I don't know why I did the calculation wrong. It's not x equals 1. It's x equals... Oh, uh, this should have been 4. It's the equation of a circle. So this is 2, so this has been root 2. Yeah, yep. This should have been x equals square root of 2. Okay, 
so kind of messed up on the computation of the x value, but I, I but I justified the same the correct thing. This one was the relative max, and this one was neither. Okay, so all right. Hope you guys found that helpful. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next free response question when we wrap up this exam. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.